Combining data from multiple Excel files is undoubtedly one of the most commonly done data cleaning tasks in Excel. And if you were to Google this term, combine data from multiple Excel files, you're going to see several videos out there, articles out there. In fact, I have done a few videos on that in the past. However, the problem becomes tricky in case you would want the query to be dynamic if the sheet names change or the names of the columns in the data sets change. How would you then combine the data? In this video, I'm going to make a query which is short and highly dynamic in case your sheet names change or the names of the columns change. The query is still going to function absolutely error free. All right, no further ado, you and I, let's write some M queries together. Let's go. All right, people, I'm here in this folder and you can see that I have three Excel files that I would like to combine, year five, year six, and year 2007, of which 2005 Excel file is open. If you take a look at the structure of the file, the names of the columns at the moment remain the same across all the three files. So we have date, sales rep, customer, amount, profit, and the region, the same columns across all the files. However, the number of rows are going to change and the year obviously is going to be 2006 in the next file and then subsequently 2007. At the moment, you're also going to see that the sheet name, which is sheet one, is going to remain the same across all the files. However, we're going to make a tweak into our data set, try to change the names of the columns Try to change the names of the sheets and let's see if the query still functions well or not. But to keep things simple at the start, I'm keeping everything just the same. The names of the sheets and the names of the columns, just same. Let's just close this, fire up power query, load the data of the three files and let's just see what kind of query do we make to make it absolutely dynamic. All right, let's just start with a blank Excel. I'm going to go to the data tab in the data. I'll say get data from file from a folder and I will navigate to the folder which contains the three files. Now, once I've navigated to the folder, which is power query tricks and years, which contain the three years of data, you can see that at the moment I do not see any of the three files, which is absolutely fine. As soon as I click on open, I am going to get to see the three files which are in that folder. Now, it's not as straight as the combine button that appears right here. I do not really want to combine the data yet because I would want to have the flexibility of the changing sheet names and the changing column names as well. So I would land myself into the Power Query Editor by clicking on Transform Data and then I will customize every single bit of my query. Let's just zoom in and get started. All right, the first thing to understand is that what exactly is the binary? You can see that these are the three Excel files that I have. Every single file is denoted by a binary in the content column. A binary to Power Query simply means a file, and I can even take a preview of the file right here. Now, it could be an Excel file, it could be a CSV file, a text file, a PDF file, it is binary. Now, if the file is an Excel file, the function to read the data inside of that file is called excel.workbook, and that's the function that I'm going to use. Now, here is how the Excel file tends to work. From the Excel file, we are going to move to the second level and get access to the sheets within that Excel file. Remember, the second level is the sheet level. And once we access the sheets, then the third level is going to be the data of that particular Excel sheet. So from the file, we move to the sheet and from the sheet, we move to the data. And that's how we're going to get to navigate to the data. At the moment, we have binaries and let's just convert these binaries into sheet level data. How do you do that? I'm going to click on the FX to add another step, which is right here. And I'm going to use the function Excel.workbook. And the Excel.workbook function needs to be applied to all of these binaries one by one by one. So I'm going to start to write a function called table.transform columns. And I'm going to say that, hey, the table that I'm trying to work with is the source table, which is nothing but the previous step right here. And in the source table, if you take a look, we had the name of the column called the content column. And that's the column that I'm trying to work with. So I'm going to come to the next step and I'm going to say something like, hey, I'm trying to work with the content column. And what am I trying to do in the content column? I am trying to go ahead, pick every single binary and then convert that into an excel.workbook readable excel format so that i get to access the sheet level data so i will write something like this i'm going to say pick up every single uh, file which is denoted by the underscore and i'm going to say hey please convert that into a readable format excel.workbook which is the function that is used to convert the excel file into a readable sheet level data close that and close the bracket press enter and now if you take a look at the difference between the first and the second step, you're going to see that here we had binaries, pretty good. And in the second step, those binaries have been converted into tables. If you peek into the table, you're going to see that you now have the access to all the sheets within that Excel file. 
At the moment, we just have sheet one. So it just shows you sheet one. But had there been more sheets like sheet two, sheet three, whatever that might be, you're going to get the names of all the sheets and the data of all the sheets and a few other properties of all those sheets in case you wanna access those as well. At this stage, I'm ready to expand all of these tables right here. Whether these tables contain one sheet data or multiple sheets of data, I don't really care. So I'm gonna click on the expand button right here, uncheck the original column as a name prefix, and I'm gonna expand all of these columns right here, click on okay, and all the columns get expanded. And if you now take a look, here is where we have the data column and the data column contains the data of that particular sheet, which is all of these columns right here and all of these columns right here and all of these columns right here. At this particular stage, we have two problems that I foresee at the moment. So if I just go ahead and go to the data column and if I click on the expand button, sure enough, all of these tables are going to get expanded and I'm gonna get the data of all the sheets but the problem is that if you take a look at the data of the sheet, the headers are not really promoted. The date is in the first row of the data. However, I want that to be at the header position and this to be at the header position, this to be at the header position, so on and so forth. So I need a way to promote the headers of all of these tables. That's problem number one that I have to overcome. The second problem is that as soon as I expand the data of any particular table right here, the names of the columns are going to be hard coded and the date or column one, whatever that might be is going to get hard coded. Any hard coding of the names of the columns is going to break the query in case any of the columns change. They change the name of the column and a new column gets added. My query is going to break and I certainly don't want to do that. So how do I kind of overcome the first problem of headers first and then the names of the columns. So there is a secret function right here, which is nothing but the excel.workbook function, not really a secret because we've used it, but there's a secret ingredient of that function, which is right here, after you have provided the underscore, which is every single binary, if you put a comma, it goes to the second input, which is an optional input, it says use headers as any. That simply means that the data within the sheet, if the first row is the header, do you wanna mark it as a header or not? Every single file that we had contained sheet one, sheet one contained the data, and the data started right from the first row. And I would want the first row to be headers, yes. So I'm just gonna write the true right here, T-R-U-E, and close the bracket and press enter. Nothing changes whatsoever. If I go to the next step, I still get those three tables if I click on the side of the table, you can see that the headers are promoted and I do not really wanna do one more step of promoting headers for all of these tables right now. Now let's just come to the second problem, which is if I click on the expand button, I am going to get the names of the columns hard coded, which I do not really want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the table.combine function to combine the data of all of these three tables, no matter what column do you have, as simple as that. So I'm gonna click on the FX right here and the FX, I'm gonna say something like, hey, table.combine. And as soon as I open up the bracket right here, it says, hey, give me which tables do you wanna combine? So I wanna combine the first table, the second table, and the third table. Note that it is asking you for tables, but the tables should be packed within a list. That means you can't just supply tables like that. You have to first create a list. The list should contain the tables and that is what is going to be the input of this function. So let's just make a list, let's just delete this come to the data column, right click on the data column, and I'm gonna say drill down, which is one way of creating a list. So that column is extracted as a list. Once you've extracted that column has a list and which has the three tables, if I can just maybe preview that, it's all good to go. I can wrap this in the table.combine function because this produces a list with three tables. And I'm just gonna go right here, say table.combine and start the bracket, close the bracket, and press enter and all the columns of all the tables are now combined everything is good to go um, and i can just go to the home tab say close and load the data all right quick interruption in the video if you're enjoying this video so far and you would like to level up your skills to the next level start to solve harder more difficult problems even of your own data i would highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses on dax query and modeling and those are going to give you immense confidence in understanding the logic and then build solutions to your own problems as well. All right, let's just get back to the video. All right, once we have loaded the data in Excel, the data looks something like this, and this is the moment of the truth. Let's just see if we change the name of the sheet, have two sheets in one Excel file, change the names of the columns, does the query break or not? Let's just go and take a look at our Excels. All right, I've opened up the 2005 Excel file and the name of the sheet is sheet one. Let's just first change the name of the sheet and just arbitrarily call it as Chandeep, press enter, and that's the name changed. 
Now, in this sheet, for some good reason or no reason, I'm just going to add another column called, let's say, category. And I'm just going to maybe write something like hi all across, press enter. And this sheet contains one extra column. I am also going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that and just say this is sheet one uh, for some reason. And I will call this data and I will say this data is not 2005, but this data is 2004. And I'm just going to drag it down, control C and paste special values. Good to go. Delete that column. And I will also delete that column because that existed in only 2005 data. Now we've made sufficient change. Now at the moment, the name of the sheet is not the same in all the three Excel files. The first Excel file, which is 2005, does not contain one sheet. It contains two sheets of data, which is Chandeep and sheet one. This contains 2005 data. This contains 2004 data. And the structure of the data is also not the same across all the files. One column is extra. Let's just close this Excel file, save it. And let's just go back to our query and take a look at this query refreshes or not. So right click and I'll say a refresh. Obviously I get one new category column. Let's just see, do we get 2004 data or not? Sure enough, we do get 2004 data. If you want to sort the data, you can, but at the moment we do get 2004 data and everything works just absolutely well. There is just one small caveat that I would like to leave you with. Although we have been able to make the names of the sheets and the columns absolutely dynamic, but this is going to be absolutely dangerous for your Power BI models because if the schema of the data changes in your Power BI models, your model are very very likely to break all right that's been it let me know if you have any questions around this and i will be glad to reply in the end a big shout out about my dax and my power query training programs in case you are a beginner and you'd like to master the fundamentals really well get on top of that and then start to solve harder more difficult problems even of your own data i would highly recommend that you take a look at my courses they are going to be super awesome. I've also done a similar other video uh, just a few days ago wherein you want to combine the data from multiple Excel files, but you have a couple of junk rows on the top. At the moment, the first row was the header row, which was all good. But if you have a junk row on the top and you want to remove those few first junk rows and then combine the data, you might want to check out this particular video. It's going to be super awesome as well. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you in the next one. Bye now.